Good morning and praise the Lord. Let's go Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so thankful and honored. We're able to come and fellowship your presence, hear your word. We thank you, Father God, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who saved us, who delivered us, who redeemed us, who gave us everlasting, eternal, abundant life. Lord, we pray for our nation, Lord, and our leaders, each one of them hearken unto you. We speak peace to our country, decree, and declare we have a mighty revival in our nation. And Lord, we pray for all the nation world that every nation has a gospel preached as a witness, and then they should come. We pray for all those missionaries out there, Lord, that's preaching Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for protecting them and meeting them, all their needs in abundance in Jesus' name. And we pray for all the body of Christ, Lord. It's each, each every believer become baptized in the Holy Spirit, be taught about who they are in Christ Jesus, and going forth in this life, ruling and reigning in Christ Jesus. And Father God, I thank you, Lord, for anointing me today, that I'll be able to say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me utterance of the Holy Ghost. And I pray for all those stories. We hear your word and hear the Holy Ghost. We'll go forth and become doers of your word led by the Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you have your Bible, let's listen to our Bibles here at Isaiah chapter 53. And we'll read some divine healing scriptures to see where the Lord takes us. So here in Isaiah 53, now the scripture says here, in, uh, yeah, beginning in verse 4 and verse 5, Surely borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastised our peace upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now let's go here to Matthew. Matthew's going to refer to this in Matthew chapter 8 by the Holy Spirit. Let's start here in verse 16. When he was come, they brought unto him, Jesus, many was possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. That it might be fulfilled which spoke by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself, took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. And then let's go over here to 1 Peter like you're heading towards the book of Revelation, way over to the right in 1 Peter chapter 2. Now the scripture says here in verse 24, Who his own self bear our sins, his own body on the tree, that we be in dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Notice here this scripture says here that this is in the past tense. Those last six words said, by whose stripes ye were healed. That does away with, you know, I'm trying to get it. Jesus already got it for me. Now, many of us didn't know that, you know, and maybe we had to really kind of renew our mind when we found out about that. But nevertheless, the fact is that God has already placed the curse that was on mankind upon Jesus when Jesus was being crucified. So not only Jesus took our sins on the cross, but he also took the punishment to sin or God placed it upon him. And not only that, but the curse of sickness, disease, poverty, everything that Satan brought through the sin of Adam and Eve. And Jesus came to redeem us. And as believers, we need to always remind ourselves that I'm redeemed from that. When it comes to anything, but try to come upon us. The enemy will do all he can to discourage us from receiving from God. If we step out to believe God's promises, or when we hear the word, act upon the word of God, Jesus taught us in the Gospels, like Mark chapter 4, that the sower sows the word. And Satan comes immediately to take the word out. He uses affliction and persecution. The lust of other things cares this world, the deceitfulness of riches. So those things come to try to, in our own minds, disqualify us from receiving from God. Like condemnation and guilt uh, of our past life, whether it was yesterday or days before or years before, about what we did wrong. And that's why you've got this today, because look what you did. Well, that needs to be resisted. That needs to be cast down and thought, no, that's not my thought in Jesus' name. That's not what the Word says. Jesus took my judgment to sin, and I'm not being judged for sin. Once a believer receives, or once a person receives Jesus Christ as Lord, they become God's beloved, and they'll never be judged for their sins. The, the Scripture teaches us that. Let's go over here to Romans chapter 5, please, and read here in Romans chapter 5. <clears throat> now, the Scripture says here in verse 9, Much more than being now justified by by his blood, we should be saved from the wrath through him. And then let's go over here to your right. Let's go way over to 1 Thessalonians and read here in 1 Thessalonians in chapter 5. Now the scripture says here, well, actually start in chapter 1. In chapter 1, verse 10, to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Now chapter 5, verse 9, for God has not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. So as believers, we don't have to think, well, now the reason I'm suffering this today is because I didn't walk in love yesterday or I committed some terrible sin years ago. No, that's what the enemy uses to bring up our past life. And God does not remember our sins. And we need to uh, oh, realize that ourselves. Now let's go over to Hebrews, please. Just keep going to your right. And we'll go to Hebrews chapter 8. Now the scripture says in verse 12, 
God's saying, I will be merciful to the unrighteous, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. And then in chapter 10, verse 17, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. So God doesn't punish us for sinning because he doesn't remember what we did wrong anyway. And thank God for that because he sees us in Christ Jesus. Remember Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13 says that we're in Christ. And the Bible says in Colossians 1, verse 22, in God's sight, we're holy, unblameable, unreprovable. So God won't blame us or he won't reprove us. No, because he sees us in Christ. And so this is why it's important for us as believers to always cast down imaginations that come to us of condemnation and guilt. It's the enemy uses that to, to try to get us in our own thinking, our own belief process, to disqualify us from receiving God, or just you know analyze or analytical think about, oh, this is why I've got this because look what I did. You know, I didn't do this right or didn't do that right. No, divine healing's free. Not only do we have divine healing in our covenant, but we have divine health. So God doesn't want us to get sick to begin with. And he made us the righteous of God in Christ. And as believers, that's how we need to focus on this, that Jesus' blood has cleansed us from all sin. And present tense is cleansing us from sin in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. And that God's not punishing us for anything we did wrong. And we need to always cast down those thoughts that come to us to try to shame us for, look what you did. Now, we're supposed to walk in love, but we're never going to be perfect at it. And we don't have to be to earn from God because these are free gifts that God has given us. Everything we have in our covenant has been given to us. It's free. It belongs to us in Christ Jesus. And what, what, what it was is that most of us didn't know anything about it. Like we didn't know anything about the new birth, then we got born again, and we had no idea that all these other benefits were in the new covenant. Waiting for us just to find out about them, accept them, believe them, act accordingly to them, and see ourselves with them. Well, so when it comes to divine healing, if a believer needs healing, then we need to realize that God has already put our sick and disease upon Jesus, and Jesus already paid for our sins, and he became a curse for us so we could live in divine health. That's called abundant life, and God wants us to live an abundant life. He gave us abundant life through Jesus Christ. Life, have life, and have it more abundantly. And every year of our life needs to be life and life more abundantly. And just knowing that what Jesus did for us and acting on those promises and beginning to thank God and praise God that we are everything his word says we are. And that we have what his word says we have. Now over here, let's go back over here and read this testimony here in Romans chapter 4 about what Abraham did and Sarah. Now the scripture says here, we'll start in verse 17. As, as is written, I have made thee the father of many nations before him who believe, even God, who quickened the dead. And calleth those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope, believed in hope, he might become the father of many nations. According to that which is so, spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he Abraham considered not his own body now dead, but was about a hundred years old. Neither yet the dead in Sarah's womb. He staggered not the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what God had promised, God was able to perform. Now think about this. By him just taking and Sarah taking God at his word. That was God that said, so shall thy seed be. I've made thee the father of many nations. That's what they went by. And they hadn't lived a perfect life, but they still got this miracle to manifest in their life, even though their bodies were dead in reproduction. The world will say, it's too late. You should have been having this a long time ago. You see, the world and the carnal reasoning, of course, the enemies behind it, will bring all kinds of accusations against the believer that stepped out on God's word to believe God's promises. And he'll bring all, all kinds of accusations why you're not going to have it. Well, look what the doctor said. And do you know anybody ever got cured of this? No, you don't know anybody. In fact, you know a good Christian never did get healed. So the enemy will always bring those kind of accusations to, uh, against us. We need to realize that's who it's from. It's not from, it's not from God. When well, I first got saved, I thought it was just God trying to tell me why I don't have it. But again, I didn't know any scripture to combat against those things or resist them in Jesus' name. And again, this is one of the reasons why we're taught to cast down imaginations. There in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to point out strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing exalts self against knowledge of God, and bring to captivity every thought to be in Christ. That, you know, that's what we have to work on by saying, no, I resist this thought in Jesus' name. This is another reason why it's important for us to keep the word before our eyes and keep listening to the word. You remember Romans chapter 10. It says there in verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now I think sometimes we wish it said faith came by heard. We probably wouldn't have been here today. But no, it comes by hearing. 
So what I need to do is that every day, I need to make sure Jesse's hearing the word and hearing the word taught about who I am in Christ Jesus and what belongs to me in Christ Jesus. And the sooner we realize that, it's just it, we develop a habit that I just need, I need a minister teaching me the word every day, reading me the word, quoting the word to me, preaching the word to me, ministering the word to me about what belongs to me in Christ Jesus. Now, again, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We're hearing stuff all the time in this world, you know, not even intentionally, but you can hear doubt and unbelief by people being around us. You know, some of us be working on your car and, and just talk about how bad your car is and you probably won't get it out of the garage. Well, then here we've been believing God, our car gets fixed and we've been cast down those thoughts about that anyway, because look how many miles it is and what do you expect? Well, you know, we take our scriptures, like tithing. You know, we usually take our tithing scriptures and use Malachi chapter 3, verse 11, that tells that God rebuked the fire for our sake. Had this van in Bible school, and uh, it started making a terrible noise. The engine did. And this is a serious noise, you know. And had 78,000 miles on it. Had no money. I don't have a credit card. I'm just barely getting by. So I took it, it was uh, to the dealership there in this town I was living in. And, uh, it is it clunk, 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 make a noise like that, pulled it in. And so they di put, put it, you know, diagnosed it, you put it on the computer, and he came back and told me that this is the, the engine has to be replaced and how much money it's gonna cost. And it's just amazed that you even were able to get it into the par parking lot today, you know, the dealership today. And he you know, he's being nice, but he's just telling me everything's wrong with it. And they you know, you you can't drive this, it's gonna it's it's gonna lock up on you and seize, you know. He went on about this. Well, I don't have any money. And, you know, I did what I could. I took it ahead. And now I, I, don't, I can't pay this guy. He says, well, it's going to be $75 then to, just for us to check it out. Well, he said, no. Nah. He says, I'm not going to charge anything. You're going to get a parking lot anyway. Well, so, yeah, I thanked him. And I took my scriptures. And I don't have any other scriptures that I know to use at this time. I don't think. I got Mark 11, 23, and I got my tithing scriptures. So I took those scriptures before I pulled out of the parking lot and started it up. I took Mark 11, 23, and I got my Bible out, and I read Mark 11, 23 to my engine. I don't know what else to do. I got this problem. I don't have, I don't, I, I don't have transportation. I don't have any money to get this thing fixed. So I read Mark 11, 23 to it, where Jesus said, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever is saying this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast to sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall but sin. And then I read Malachi chapter 3. I opened up a Bible and read Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 through verse uh, 12 to my car, my van. And it's where the scripture says here, Bring you all the tithes to the storehouse, that there may meet my house. This is out in the dealership parking lot. <laughs> Bring you all the tithes to the storehouse, that there may meet my house, and prove me now here with say, Lord of hosts. If I will not win seven for you, I'll bless and sure receive it. Shall not be removed and receive it. And I, now this is the verse I need. And I rebuke the fire for your sake. And he shall sow the fruits of your ground, and you shall find cats, fruit, time, fields, say of hosts. And all nations call you blessed, for each blank is blessed, say, Lord of hosts. Well, I need verse 11. Now, I think that's about all the scriptures I knew to use at the time, in Jesus' name. So I did that, got it, got in a van, started it up, and um, it's just still making that terrible racket. And I pulled out of the parking lot. I didn't have too far to go home. I pulled up to my apartment building. And it was, uh, you know, nice weather outside. And a lot of people had their sliding glass doors open and windows open. And so a lady le leans out, I think the second or third floor, as I pulled in. It's making so much noise. Some lady leans out and says, oh, that's so-and-so wrong with your engine. Same thing the dealership just told me, you know. You know we, it's amazing. It's still running. You know, that was nice to hear that report. And I got two people in agreement, the guy at the garage and this lady. And I thought, I'm buying that in Jesus' name. Well, so every day... I just kept reading those scriptures, drove it to Bible school, drove it to work, it's still making a racket. And it also, just one day, the racket was kind of wrong, you know, kind of quieted down. As a process of time, your mind's on something else, you got other problems, you're dealing with those other problems, just trying to get through school, trying to just survive here, and kept on just quoting God's word, praying his spirit right. Well, process of time. Now, I had, at the time, I had 78,000 miles in the van. And the dealership man told me, so we've had a lot of problems with these engines. You know, it's like, like looking over his shoulder to tell me a secret here. <clears throat> and the most I've seen on the, in miles on this engine is 75,000 miles. So he's trying to tell me I'm, I'm lucky because I got 78,000 miles. So I thanked him, you know, and left and did what I just told you I did. And so at the process of time, see, like the noise got quieter. Well, I had a choice. I got to keep driving it. 
to go to work and go to Bible school and do what I've got to do and constantly just praising God and thanking God, man, just running well. Well, this went on, you know, till I had 100,000 miles on it. By this time, I'm gra graduating Bible school, and I got to drive all the way out to, you know, I'm going out to New England, and I did, got to do a home Bible study there. Thank you for my brother and his wife. And I just it's, I just kept, kept quoting those scriptures. So I did that, and it went up to like almost 168,000 miles. Still had the same problem. Well, one day, as I was going to this church to preach, it broke down. So I had to call a tow truck, and still don't have a credit card. And I, I told them to tow it to my town to a dealership that was the same dealership as, as this car is. And the, so they towed it there, and I don't know, somehow I got a ride the rest of the day. And so Monday, that was Sunday, Monday, I called the dealership, and there I told my van's outside, the keys are in it, you know, tell me what, it, what it's going to take to fix it. Well, they let me know they need to put a rebuild engine in it. I told them, go ahead and do this. Now, still, I didn't have any money, but that came to my heart, go ahead and do this. Now, I didn't have that when it first started to go ahead and do this. So it came time that there was going to be, you know, whatever, how much money it was going to be. And when I went to pick it up, it was let, they charged me less money than what they told me. And I just had just enough money in my checking account to pay for it. And ended up having that vans many, 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 way over 200, 300, maybe 300,000 miles. But anyway, had a long, long time later. But anyway, that's what I did with that. See, situations will arrive and all we have is God and his word to get us through these situations. And what you just do is just keep believing God and thanking God that this thing's fixed in Jesus' name. At the time, I had no money, had no other resources I could do anything about this with to pay this, you know, the expense to be. So, you know, I got to get this thing fixed. I got to believe God for these promises. And so God's word, that's one of the reason why he gave us his promises. Abraham, we read there, and Sarah, they're in a situation. All they have is promises of God. So shall thy seed be. I've made thee the father of many nations. And they went by that and got their bodies to come alive in the midst of an impossible situation where people could have said to them, you should have had this baby a long time ago. It's too late. Look how old you are. You're in your 90s, and this is just going to happen. It would look ridiculous. I mean, no one. This is, this is a miracle that when this happens. This hasn't happened, happened before. What would we do? We just begin to praise God and thank God that we are what is worth. This is what Abraham did. He just kept giving glory to God. He was he became fully persuaded that what God had promised, God was able to perform. Now, a couple summers ago, with the automobile I have, the transmission started making a lot of noise. And it wouldn't shift right, so I took it to those, those people that work on the transmissions and foreign cars and stuff. And, oh, actually, ain't got a car. So uh, they worked and worked on it, and uh, they had it in their garage almost for three months, on the lift for several weeks. And they just would work on it every day trying to figure out. Finally, I had to take it to the dealership, and they put it on their computer. I'd already been on a computer before, but they let me know it's going to cost $9,000. Your transmission needs replaced. And so I had it towed back to the place I was working on it to begin with. And I let them know, gave them a printout of what, you know, diagnosis is what it is. And they just, they kept, you know, they're frustrated about it. They can't figure out why it's working. I'm actually praying for the mechanic. He didn't get stressed out over this, you know, kind of knew the guy. So anyway, I took these scriptures over here. Now I'm using the scriptures I already used for the other van, but I took these scriptures over here in Romans chapter eight. And the Bible says here in Romans chapter eight, verse 26 through verse 28. Likewise, the spirit also helped with our infirmities. For we know not what to pray for as we ought. But the spirit himself make the intercession for us, for only cannot be uttered. And he that searches heart no mind spirit, because he make the intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for them love God to them who called for his purpose. So every morning after I do, you know, my videos and stuff that I've got to do for the ministry, I'd go down that place and walk around the parking lot. There's a big parking lot also adjacent to it. And I'd just pray in tongues because I didn't know what else to do. The mechanics, they have worked very hard trying to find out what's wrong with us and try to fix it. And dealership problem was, ah, I just can throw a new transmission in. You know, it's only $9,000. Well, I just kept praying in the Spirit. Every day, I'd go down there and walk around when I could and pray in tongues. Over, asking God to give those people wisdom. Thanking God my vans, my car is fixed in Jesus' name. So, one day when I went there, I've been praying in tongues, walking around. See, when we don't know what to do, thank God we have praying in tongues. See, we don't always know what to do about the situation. If we know what to do about it, then we can deal with it. We can take God's word and apply it to it. Well, I've done that. But now, thank God for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And see, he said here, likewise, the Spirit will also help with our infirmities. Infirmities are weaknesses. For we know not what to pray for as we ought. Well, so I don't know what's going on with this. The mechanics don't know. And they you know, they work on Rolls Royces. So they don't know what's going on with it. 
and they've got a lot of experience. You know, both of them have like over 40 years experience. So they're all locked up here. They don't know what to do about this, but God does. He knows what to do, what, what to do about this. You know, get rid of it, have it towed away, take the junkyard, put the new transmission in. What are you going to do? I just kept praying in tongues about this. I don't have any other choice. I've been using the word. I got the name of Jesus. Thank God for that. But thank God for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I just would walk around praying in tongues. No one knows what I'm doing. I mean, there they did. So they had it up on the lift. And I walked in there. And they took this wrench. And it's plying to it. Now, they're both Italian guys. And all of a sudden, this leakage started happening. And I heard them start talking in their in their language. And I thought, uh-oh. That's... They've got a breakthrough. I could tell by looking at them. They know exactly what's wrong. Whatever it was, they took care of it. And it's still driving today. And that was just probably two or $300 for the parts I took care of. But just for what need to be taken care of. And thank God, by God's grace and mercy, he gets all the credit. Thank God it's running, still running today. Well, actually, I didn't start today, but it was still run today. You see, we have God's word to use, and we appropriate God's promises. Use that for whatever we're faced with. When those situations, we're not too sure about what to do about this, thank God we got praying in tongues. And that works out problems in our life that we don't know what to do about them. You got children, you got loved ones, you got family members, you have a job, you have an income. Those things need to be prayed about. And there'll be situations that rise up that we don't know exactly what to do. If we do know what to do, then apply God's word to it. Using God's word. But praying in tongues is also applying God's word. It's the gift that God gave the church. Of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And praying in tongues not only keeps us built up, but we read there in that verse 20, it causes everything to work out for our good. And that's what happened. It all worked out for my good. Everything the enemy was tormenting everybody with, with fear and anxiety and stress, and what are we going to do about this? And, you know, and, and come up with all kinds of ideas to your head about what to do about it. You know, get rid of the car, dump it, get give it to somebody else, put the transmission in. Everything's coming with all kinds of confusion. But in my heart, the peace would be just keep believing God. And so after all that, 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 that summer, almost the whole summer of believing God, praying in tongues, thank God, one day the solution came forth. And see, that's why it's important that we keep on having done all stand, stand there for. We, you and I get encouraged by hearing God's word, being taught, and, and quoting those promises. This is how Abraham's, well, how's Abraham staying strong? He's con and Sarah. They're both constantly saying what the word says. They're, this was God's idea. They have this child th this way. So they're going by that. Were they perfect at faith? Of course not. No more than we are. We, we don't have to be perfect at faith because Jesus is. And so we're looking to him. And it's his faithfulness, not ours. It's his faith that we're believing in, not ours. And we just keep thanking God that we are what is worth. This is what they did. Now, they, they, you know, they became fully persuaded. I don't know how long this took, but they became fully persuaded. And one thing they did is they called those things that beat out as though they were. And another thing that they did is they gave glory unto God. Well, I thought, I can do that. I can say what the Word says about me. That's calling those things that beat out as though they were. And I can give glory to God. I can praise God and thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father God. And I'm healed and delivered in Jesus' name. Your Word says, by his stripes, I'm healed. I want to thank you, Father God. Corn your Word being on me in the name of Jesus. Yeah, that doesn't mean we don't take medicine or go to the doctor or anything else. But in the midst of all that, you have to follow your heart on that. In the midst of all that, well, you and I need to keep saying what the Word says, praising God. Because that's going to help us cast down this discouragement that comes to us to get all of us to quit and give up. And we're taught in God's Word to not cast away our confidence, which had a great recompense reward. So the enemy is always after our confidence. First, he doesn't want us to hear the word. Then he, then he doesn't want us to believe the word. And then he wants to bring up everybody else that didn't get something. Then he wants to bring up, it's not going to work for you because after all, you never have gotten anything. And whatever he can use, all kinds of bait he throws out to see if we'll bite on him. What we need to realize, this is just the enemy brings all this stuff. And we're told by God, resist the devil. Resist these thoughts. These imaginations that come to us. And that's not easy. It's a full-time job. But it's beneficial for us to keep on casting down imaginations and say, no, I refuse this thought in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus. So whether it's believing God for finances, like I was believing God for my automobiles there, or believing God for our health, or anything else, our children, our family, our loved ones, our ministry, our church, our jobs, our whole country, is we're taking God's word and applying it. And we're praising God and thanking God. God gave us his word. He gave us the name of Jesus. He seated us in heavenly places. But he also gave you and I the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And by thanking God, by praying in tongues, this builds us up. 
It causes us to stay edified, and the scripture said, and also built up in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2 and 4, and Jude, verse 20. Not only that, it helps us pray for the unknown. Because I don't know what's going on here. I definitely don't know anything about cars. But the Holy Spirit does. And by if, if, if I'll keep praying in tongues, he's going to pray through the answer. And sure enough, the answer came. Now, you could have gave up. Understand. You know, thought, that's it. You know, it can't be done. I understand all that. But, you know, really have to need to follow our peace in our heart. Do I have peace about giving up? Well, no. We got somebody that lives inside of us. The Spirit of God lives inside of us. He never saw a battle he can't win. He never saw a situation he can't get us through. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, our minds will tell us we can't, and other people around us will tell us you can't. Oh, you might as well give up. How many people wanted me to give up on my first, my van I had when I started believing God? And how many, and you know, good people, you know, they don't want to see you struggling. And how many times mechanics, other mechanics, not those guys, but other mechanics, would tell you nothing can be done? No. What do I have in your heart? Well, we get in our heart, having done all done, stand, fight the good fight of faith. And our flesh don't like to do that. Our emotions don't like to do that. And again, the enemy is going to bring up every thought to us, all the people didn't receive from God. And that's too bad. You know, we don't want to judge that and get over that. But we need to always keep that word focused in our eyes and in our ears. Now, one way we're going to do that is by reading those promises every day. Another way we're going to do that is by preachers preaching us and telling us about who we are in Christ Jesus and keep on encouraging us. There's no preacher out there perfect in faith. They all, they're all they just like every all the rest of us. They have situations in their life. They deal with doubt and unbelief just like you and I deal with doubt and unbelief. But the solution is staying with God's word. And thank God for praying in tongues. It causes everything to work out. We read there. It causes everything to work out for our good. So keep on fighting and keep on standing and keep on praying the Spirit and keep on praising God till it works out for your good. Father God, we pray today. I pray for each of your person, Lord, that's watching. I stand with them, Lord. I agree with them. They're healed, they're delivered, they're redeemed. Because of what Jesus did, we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord? Maybe you're not sure. Or maybe you know you've never done it. God wants you to receive his son, Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells us how simple it is to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. No efforts, no work. You don't have to promise God you won't sin again or nothing else. It's just by simply believe in our heart and confess in our mouth that Jesus is Lord. Now the Bible says here in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, verse 10, and verse 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart God has raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believe the righteous, the mouth confession made salvation. Verse 13 says, for whosoever called the name the Lord shall be saved. So let's do this now. Let's receive Jesus Christ the Lord if we haven't already. Pray these words with me, meet it with your heart, and you'll receive Jesus Christ your Lord. Just say this after me. And mean the words you just say, and you receive Jesus. Pray this, please. God, I come to you today to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord. I believe in my heart, and I confess my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe Jesus crucified, took my sins on a cross, took my judgment of sin, died, and was buried, and God, you raised him to the dead. Jesus, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. And thank you, Jesus, that your blood has cleansed me from all sins. Because of your, you're my Lord now, I know that when I die, I'll never go to hell. Thank you, Jesus, for all this. And I give you all the praise and glory. Amen. Now, the most important part of that prayer was you saying Jesus is your Lord. Now, if you did that, I'm going to encourage you to go get a Bible if you don't have one. Buy one and start reading the Gospel of John. The table of contents will tell you where it's at. Then also, once you find a church to attend. And find a church that believes Jesus is the only way to have. Every church is a little bit different than another church. But just tell the pastor, hey, I prayed on a social media and I received Jesus Christ. That pastor and church is going to help you grow and develop spiritually. And start attending there. Be faithful there. Also, if you got a prayer request, if you'd like to, you can email me at jesseritsministries.com. And we have uh, our conference call, and I call it Church on the Phone. That's at 7 o'clock. You could call in there. We usually take prayer requests there, and we also usually have communion. That phone number and access code should be right here on our Facebook page. So take advantage of that. Call in bed early, early in your fellowship with the saints. Really enjoyed being here today. I'm so glad you were able to watch today. The next time, it's Brother Rich Bynion. We love you. We're praying for you. Remember, Jesus is always more than enough.